Actually, we're live. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. 
celebration of the Holy Eucharist. My name is Evie Vaughn. I'm a member of the Vestry. I have one announcement that makes me very sad, but that's the way it is. Because of the numbers in our county, we are now requiring masks for everybody indoors at all services and meetings. So um, that's all I have. If anybody else has be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. For God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we
and also with you. Grant us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. from 2 Samuel. The king David ordered Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently with my sake for the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave orders to all the commanders concerning Absalom. So the army went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was fought in the forest of Ephraim. The men of Israel were defeated there by the servants of David, and the slaughter was great on that day, over 20,000 men. The battle spread over the face of all the country, and the forest claimed more victims that day than the sword. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of great oak. His head caught fast in the oak, and he was left hanging between heaven and earth, while the mule that was under him went on. And ten young men, Joab's armor bearers, surrounded Absalom and struck him and killed him. Then the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, Good tidings for my lord the king, for the Lord has vindicated you this day, delivering you from the power of all those who rose up against you. The king said to the Cushite, Is it well with the young man Absalom? The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to do you harm be like that young man. The king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I have died instead of you? Oh, Absalom, my son my son, hear what the Spirit saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Psalm for today is 130. Let us say it in unison. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. You, Lord, were to note what is done amiss. O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Be angry, but do 
in that scene. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the thief with the devil. Thieves must give up stealing, rather than let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building up. As there is need, so that your words may give place to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from all your bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another. Tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God, as beloved children, and live in love, as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him, 
because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that came, that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may remember that when Israel was in the wilderness during the Exodus, people cried out because they were hungry and thirsty. And God provided food for them in the form of a secretion from plants, they called manna, or bread from heaven, and provided drink for them when Moses struck a rock with his rod. John tells us that Jesus fed the multitude at a time just before the feast of the Passover. So on the next day, with these incidents from Exodus in mind, the multitude demanded that Jesus continue to provide them with food. John's discourse on the bread of life is a response to that demand. Two of Matthew's Beatitudes might help us understand what Jesus is talking about. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. The hunger and thirst for righteousness is at root the human hunger and thirst for God, which is, whether we recognize it or not, our deepest hunger. Two of the signs in John's Gospel, the water, Jesus promises the woman at the well in Samaria, and the bread with which he feeds the multitude are signs that Jesus slakes our thirst for God and satisfies our hunger for God. That is what Jesus means when he says that he is the bread of life. But the crowds do not understand what he is talking about. They want bread from heaven, like the bread that their ancestors were given by God in the wilderness. And Jesus is speaking of how he, as the bread from heaven, can satisfy their hunger for God. Jesus satisfies this hunger in two ways both of which he touches upon at some point in this discourse. He is, first of all, the bread from heaven in person, satisfying our hunger for God by revealing God to 
Yahuwah. He is second, the bread from heaven, uniting us to him in communion and sharing his life with us. First, Jesus, as God's word made flesh, is, as Bishop John Robinson aptly put it, the human face of God, and so reveals God's nature, character, and purposes. <clears throat> Later in John's Gospel, Jesus will in fact say to Philip, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. <clears throat> Some authors of the wisdom literature of the Old Testament understood the word which reveals God is bread from heaven. Remember that Deuteronomy declares that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And in Ecclesiasticus or Syracus, we read that nourish, wisdom will nourish the one who fears God and practices the law with the bread of understanding and give him the water of learning. In the second sense, Jesus, when he speaks of himself as the bread of life, identifies himself with our food and drink in the Eucharist. Receiving the bread with which he identifies himself in the Eucharist, we are united to him and to one another. We share the life which he shares with the Father. And so together we have a foretaste of the eternal life that God offers us. Jesus tells the crowd, whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give to the life of the world. This course focuses, of course, <coughs> on the bread that is Jesus' Eucharistic flesh. But later in the discourse, we will speak also of his Eucharistic blood. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food. In my blood In the celebration of the Eucharist, Jesus first satisfies our hunger for God by revealing God as we unpack the scriptures in the liturgy of the world, and then satisfies our hunger for God by making himself our food and drink and sharing his life with us celebration of the Holy Communion. It's no wonder that the crowds were perplexed, for Jesus and they are talking across the world, and they cannot understand what it is he is trying to tell them. But John unpacks the meaning for us, and we can say in the words of one of our hymns, All who hunger, gather gladly. Holy man, it is our bread. Come from wilderness and wandering. Here in truth, we will be fed. You that yearn for days of fullness. All around us is our food. Taste and see the grace of God. Taste and see that God is good. <coughs> All who hunger never stranger, seek or be a welcome guest. Come from restlessness and roaming, here in joy we keep the feast. We that once were lost and scattered, in communion's love have stood. Taste and see the grace return. Taste and see God is good. All who hunger sing together. Jesus Christ is living bread. 
come from loneliness and loss. Here in peace, we have been fed. Blessed are those who from this table live their days in gratitude. Taste and see the great heart. Taste and see that God is good. Amen. Let us rise and join in the night. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, time one from life. True God, from true God, not, not made from being with the Father. Through us, for us, for our salvation, he came down. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death. On the third day, he rose again, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in one spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken by the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people today is Form 3 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That we may be We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. We pray for those on our intercessory prayer list and those we now name silently or aloud. Betty Blanchard, Louise Basir, Charles Donovan, Chip Janky. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray for those who have died, especially those we now name silently or aloud. to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son Jesus Christ came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him. He lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us confess our sins 
against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. And what we have, have done, done what we have, have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Yes. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us with gladness present the offerings and the blessings of our life and labor to the Lord.
and also with you. Lift up your heart. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable to him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Andrew the Apostle, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting paradise Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Prime the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gift of God for the people. Take them in remembrance of Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart our faith for thanksgiving.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and this in singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our thanks to Brett Douglas, who's been our musician, and to Bill Judd, who's manned all the equipment. There will be refreshments afterwards in the back of the driveway. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, in our world. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you.